Welcome to the Next Level American Dream podcast, brought to you by Thompson Multifamily Group. Your hosts, Abigail and Sean, will discuss how you can take your American dream to the next level through real estate investing, business practices, and personal development. Join us as we share our experiences as a father-daughter duo who are trying to accomplish their goal of financial freedom. We hope you learn more about how to define and achieve your American dream. Here's another episode of Next Level American Dream. Welcome to the Next Level American Dream Women's Series in celebration of Women's History Month. We have a wonderful guest for you today, but first, please make sure you have subscribed if you haven't already, and we love getting your feedback through likes, comments, ratings, and reviews. Today, Abigail had a conversation with Mandy McAllister. Mandy is a medical device sales representative who has a side hustle of small multifamily syndications. Recently, she started a women's community on Facebook called Aspiring Women Achieving More. Today, she talks about the challenges and benefits of being a woman in real estate and how to use that as a competitive advantage. If you found any value from today's episode, then please share it with a friend and help us grow. For more information on our sponsor, visit thompsonmultifamilygroup.com to start taking your American dream to the next level through passive investing. Hi, Mandy. Welcome to the Next Level American Dream. How are you? I was just living the dream, Abby. How are you? <laughs> I'm wonderful. We were chatting earlier before we started recording, and I can already tell you're going to have an amazing energy for today's episode. A little bit about your background and your previous careers up until now. Yeah, absolutely. I so I I grew up on a farm, right? So I like I you know that hard work ethic stuff uh, is kind of in my blood. Both my parents yeah. were entrepreneurs. My dad is a farmer. My my mom is a uh, small gift manufacturing business. And then I ended up you know working at the floor of the board of trade because your dad is a farmer plus masters in economics equals board of trade. Absolutely. And you know saw so many guys lose money like that. You know, it was, you could make money quick, you could lose money quick. And that kind of made me feel like, oh, hard assets, like farm ground, like actual stuff rather than paper is, is what, that's exactly is what investing means to me. And so from, you know, it, I saw the writing on the wall, like I'm pretty good at like adding and subtracting, you know, but like computers are way better. Right. So I, I made the switch to trading on the screen and ended up, I, I didn't love it because it wasn't people oriented. It was just clicking a mouse. So I switched to medical device sales in 2005, 2006. And I've been doing that really ever since. But in 2016, I started, you know, kind of a side hustle of real estate investing. And my wheelhouse is really small multis. Got a portfolio of my own, and then I've helped investors bring in some, you know, alternative investments to their portfolios as well. And I'm, you know, looking to continue to grow in the real estate space. Awesome. What attracted you to real estate? How did you find that opportunity to begin with coming from medical device sales? You know, it's, it's, it's a funny story. And it's, it's, you know, like a lot of people, it's like an idea that you have in the back of your head for a really long time, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was 19 years old on the porch of like a house at a friend's like party in college. And she was explaining to me that her dad owned that house and she rented the rooms to our sorority sisters. And I'm like, (laughs) and you get to keep the money. That's right. That is the what best. I'm doing right now. That is what I'm doing right now. Yeah. That's so funny. See, that is see, you are you are set <laughs> up for success in a significant way, Abigail. So so that was like in the back of my head, and then I'd heard other like kind of friends talk, you know, about things. Somebody mentioned rich dad poor dad. Somebody mentioned yep. the richest man in Babylon, and then you know I just kind of dug in, and I'm like, wait, I can pick what I do with my life if I have money coming in, you know? So it was always a thing that was there. I did a ton of learning from like, call it 2007, 2008 until, you know, 2016. I bought a condo to live in in 2008, expecting that the market would, you know, rebound really quickly and I'd be able to refinance and go move in somewhere else. That didn't happen as planned. But in 2016, I bought my first small multi, a fourplex. Yeah, I feel like an easy stepping stone is to get your own place, maybe possibly rent it out, refinance, or like sell it, and then you just move on to the next one. I feel like that's a good. good Uh, uh, You 
especially for someone your age, a book I always, I don't know your age, but you seem. I'm, I'm 21. You, you are on your stuff home, girl, but you are at the beginning of adulthood, you know? Totally check out this book called Set for Life by Scott Trench. If you have not read that, it is a brilliant, like, actionable step process of how to achieve financial freedom by doing many of the things that you're doing right now. My gosh, I'm, I'm 40. Like, where would I be had I been giving this right. action starting at, at 21? So, yeah, it's a lot of learning. But it's it, the the act the stuff happens when there's action behind the learning, you know. Totally. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Okay, so moving on to a little bit more of a a little bit deeper question. But what are some of the challenges? You're a woman in sales and real estate. What are some of the challenges you faced in both of those industries? And what are some of the things that you did to overcome them, or how did you cope with those challenges? My gosh, that I love this. So I, you know, I did my master's. I started undergrad in chemistry and ended up doing a master's in economics, but, you know, worked on the floor of the board of trade. All of these things that I've done are boys clubs, yeah. right? So I'm very comfortable in a boys club. And I'll tell you that until I was like 34, you know, I was like, oh, well, so much of this, you know, women are held back and they, they you know, this, we can't, the glass ceiling, all of that stuff. I, I kind of poo pooed it, frankly, because I hadn't experienced it myself. And then when I was 34, I was pregnant with my son and I was told you can't interview for this management position because of your baby. And I'm like, that's real. That's that happens, you know? So I, I just, I'll say that, you know, so much of, listen, one generation before me, there was one woman who was in the C-suite. And I, I think, you know, obviously like women, you know, we're in this situation that there's kind of a seismic shift mm -hmm. of women rooting for women versus women kind of, you know, being catty of that's the, that's the one who got that one seat. And, and you get it, like if you think it through logically, you empathetically, you get it that that woman is the only one that's there. So you had to hate her one generation ago, but now women in my generation and leading into yours, like I feel like it's our responsibility to yeah. be lifting each other up in a bigger way because there's more than one seat at the table now, you know? And we get this chance to serve as mentors and serve as sponsors, talking great about people when they're not in the room. And that's actually part of the reason for this aspiring women achieving more because women are communal. You know, so if we can identify with the thing that we feed off of and we can, you know what, if you get to get, okay, you get a bunch of women together in a kitchen, you know, they get stuff done. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, why do we think it will be any different in the business world? You get a bunch of ladies together, they're going to talk a lot, but they're going to get stuff done, you know? And, yeah. and I just, I really secrets. feel, huh? You'll learn some secrets, but you're going to learn some secrets and you're going to get some stuff done, you know, and I'm going to hand you my baby and we're going to just take care of each other. Do you know what I mean? So I, I feel like if we harness that, like how our brains evolved over years and years, then we're going to get so much further, so much faster. And what an incredible example we're going to be setting for the next generation that are going to, you know, not be strapped with the stuff that we're dealing with. And I'll say one more thing on that. So in this commercial real estate investing world, there's not a ton of women. There's, I mean, that's, that's a, a very, you know, there's varying different levels of boys club, right? And commercial real estate is like a friggin' bananas boys club, you know? So what I did is that, you know, my first couple of years trying to play the game, I kind of sat back and I thought, woo, I don't, I don't belong. I'm the only woman here. This is weird. And then I thought, oh, wait. I'm the only woman here. How easy is it going to be to stand out? Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. So one thing that we did, you know, I, I just, I realized that this thing that could be, could be holding me back and I could use it as a crutch to be a reason that I'm not moving forward more quickly. I could reposition that in my brain to be my competitive advantage, you know? Absolutely. And now it's, I, I branded myself a cash flow mom. And when I send out mailers to apartment owners, it's a picture of my kid picking his nose. And it says, when, when it's time to sell your apartment building, pick us, you know, That's, you're going to remember that. Yes. 
yeah that's cute I like that a lot you gotta <laughs> use what you you have if you're given difficulties use it yeah well you can reposition it in your head that's a choice mm-hmm. you know and just choose to use it the right way exactly and even some of them let it motivate you like it, yes. it can't be a competitive advantage it can be lighting a fire under you and exactly you better which I love. So moving on to the flip side of that, what are some benefits you found in being able to, you mentioned uh, earlier, you get to do what you want now that you have money coming in, you have a young child. What are some Mm -hmm. of those benefits that you found in what you're doing now? The biggest one is, you know, in that last company, I've, I've subsequently switched day jobs and I work for an incredible mission driven company from by day right now. I, and I'm going to do that until it's not fun anymore, even though that I, I could, you know, feasibly yeah. support myself with just my, my passive income. But that, that job before I was a new single mom, I, you know, basically long story short, my boss told me to do something that I knew was not okay. You know, he's like, you know, so identify patients to look in places that it it would, it was not okay, you know? And I was, because I knew my mortgage would be paid and my kid would be fed, I wasn't, I didn't feel pressured to make a decision to do something that felt outside my moral compass. So, you know, what I will say is if you, if you just know that your needs are taken care of, it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, like if you know that you have food and shelter and, you know, everyone is provided for with those basic things, Mm -hmm. you know, you get a chance to live a more true to yourself life. And that is the number one, like there's nothing more, you know, fulfilling than knowing that you're operating by your own decision versus what's expected of you or because you're scared running from something. I love that definition of it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's so nice to know that you're taken care of and you can start doing the things that you feel are right for yourself or that you want to do with your life. Like it's Mm -hmm. really nice to have that, that freedom. Mm -hmm. I've never considered money happiness, but having money can give you the freedom to do the things that make you. Yes. Yeah. It's not money equals happiness, but money equals freedom and freedom can equal happiness. You know what I mean? Totally agree. It's, it's a whole different shift of perspective when you think of it that way. Okay. So you mentioned earlier, your amazing group of aspiring women achieving more. What inspired you to create that group in the first place? Yeah. So I I had a real estate coach who also did kind of like a high performance call, just like a personal development thing. And I'll tell you, I don't know, five, seven years ago, I dived headfirst into figuring myself out, you know, because I I feel like you you can go through your entire life without figuring out what you want and what you stand for and what you need. You you can totally do that. So I I went kind of all in on that. So in this kind of high performance call with a bunch of other women, we were talking about this, you know, in multifamily real estate, you, you know, and in any type of like get stuff done role, it's kind of this masculine energy, this go doer, fight, kill, eat what you kill stuff, you know, but then there's, you got to remember at some point that you're a girl, you know, cause I, there's a, there's a difference between feminine and masculine energy. And it used to piss me off when people would say that, like, come on, no, like I get stuff done just because I'm a girl doesn't mean I need to have some other woo woo energy, but it's, now I completely embrace it and I feel more full because of it. But we had identified that we kind of have to show up with this masculine energy to get stuff done in multifamily real estate. And we started a book club reading stuff by Alison Armstrong. I I adore her. Like I have such a fangirl girl crush on this author, Alison Armstrong, who talks a lot about relationships and, you know, really like workshops through like our brains are, you know, thousands of years old. They haven't evolved in the same way a lot of other stuff has. Mm -hmm. So if you think through from that basic point, you know, it was really neat to identify with other women who were in a similar spot. And then we realized, oh, wait, there's got to be more of us out there. 
you know? So we started a little Facebook group right at the beginning of 2020. And uh, we're at like 2,100 people now in February of 2021. So it's little doses of inspiration. And one thing that we're doing that's really cool that I think your mom joined us at, and I would love to see you at if you're interested. Uh, yeah. Whenever you're working on anything, any goal, anywhere you want to go, if you know the big end point, all, you're, all you have to do is figure out that next right step to put you in that direction, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so we have communally banded together feminine energy, right? Like women taking care of women, lifting each other up. And we come together to figure out what's that next, next right step. And if you need a resource, if you need an introduction, if you need to talk stuff out loud, because that's what we do, you know, then we will help you with that. And you commit to that next right step, come back the next week and tell us how you did. It's, it's been so cool to see the progress that a ton of women have made with that accountability stuff. I can even attest to that. My mom went on there last weekend or last week and I got you. My, one of my big goals was to finish my women's series. I got two extra people and I finished it yesterday and I'm awesome. And I'll tell you what, do not discount the power of social media. If you want more women, Aspiring Women Achieving More is chock full of women doing big, cool stuff yeah. in all kinds of different aspects of life. Post a little thing. You're going to get pinged by dozens, I'm sure of it. Oh, I am definitely planning on it, which is really exciting because I am young and a woman. So mm -hmm. I walk into rooms and everybody is like, cool. yep. Is she supposed to be here? I didn't know it was bring your daughter to work day. And then the problem there is that informs how you feel. Mm -hmm. And then how you feel informs your energy of how you show up, which is actually how they're reacting. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I'll tell you what, I'm 40. I just now feel like I'm getting taken seriously. Just now. Understand you got a lot of years, you know, needing to know yourself and show up with your knowledge and your power. Like if you haven't watched, is it Angela Duckworth? Like her power posing stuff, her book was grit. Yes, but oh, uh, so good. Amy Cuddy, I think it's Amy Cuddy. Watch her TED talk. Oh, it's so powerful on imposter syndrome because I feel like women really imposter syndrome hard, mm -hmm. even more hard than men, and especially young women who are smart and making stuff happen. Because you know, just because you're young doesn't mean you don't know your stuff. It, it means that you haven't had an opportunity to have as much experience as some, yeah. but it doesn't mean you don't know your stuff. Like you got to show up like you got, like you own this and I you do it like yourself. <laughs> Thank you for the very empowering advice. It really, <laughs> it really kicks off my morning to a beautiful stuff. So we mentioned your child and you're using him as part of your competitive advantage. You're using you being a mom as a target point to how you're, getting people's attention, but how has it altered your family life? We mentioned mm. a little bit of it, but has it, have you seen amazing benefits with not just knowing that your needs are taken care of, but anything mm. beyond that? You know, I'll tell you the struggle is real. You know, like any mama listening to this is going to like identify with mom guilt and, mm. oh my God, I should like, I'm Okay. My nanny is helping my son fill out his Valentine's for his class right now, right? Oh. And I, the, the thing is, like, I, part of my brain, part of my heart is like, oh, I should be doing that. Okay. However, when I take a big step back and define what I stand for and, and what I, I want to be, he's cared for right now. Like, I had a chance to help him with the first two you know, and now I have this chance to talk with you and maybe, you know, give a couple of words to somebody that might listen. That's going to make them think a little bit differently about what they can accomplish or do in their life, you know? So yeah. this is so important. So what I will say is, yes, there are amazing benefits in terms of time freedom that I'm moving towards because I don't necessarily need my day job anymore. Yeah. However, the path to get there, I mean, it's, it's messy, you know, the middle is messy. And again, the more you can define exactly what you need and exactly where your time should be spent. I am ruthless over managing my time and making sure I'm giving 100% focus to whatever I'm doing. Right now, Abigail, it's just you and me. Like we are just doing this to try to spread some inspiration to some other people who are going to listen, right? Yeah. But as soon as we're done here, your friend Mandy is going to go, you know, make lunch with right. her son, right? 
and, and, and I'm going to be all in on that. So yes, there are amazing benefits, but one thing I think we need to give a little bit of, you know, tip our hat to is that if you are struggling and it's hard, you're not alone because the path to, you know, the, the beginning is, is inspired and the end is beautiful and the middle is messy nice. and embracing the mess and really getting there. I, I do a ton of time block. I've done a couple of videos on my hacks around time blocking, which I'll, I'll send you, but nice. embracing the mess is so incredibly important for, especially a single mama with kind of two jobs, you know? Yeah. You do have, you have more than two jobs because you're also a mom. That's, that's a full-time job. In I, I mean, I've kept them alive almost five years. I'm real proud. <laughs> there you go. I am, I'm impressed. I can barely Thank keep you. Oh, so I, <laughs> I commend you on that. And that's another thing where your group comes in handy. I'm sure there's many, many women that are moms in similar places that can get you through the day when it's really hard or just kind of hype you up when it's really, really good. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great place. And I, I'll tell you, this is a thing that I've learned in the past few years is, you know, whenever, whenever anything is going, the, the world has exploded and everybody's world exploded in 2020, right? But then everybody has these differing things that happen. It's honestly, the, it's not necessarily the pulling of a ripcord that gives you the mental, you know, freedom to feel like everything's going to be okay. It's knowing you have a ripcord there to pull yeah. and having this close network of women you can depend on to lift you up and to <laughs> take your baby when you need them is, yeah. is, is that ripcord in many ways. Yeah, no, I completely agree. So I've talked a lot about this in some sense, but my final question to you is what does the American dream mean to you? Mm. And then what are the steps or what are you doing to now take that dream to the next level? Love it. Oh, that's, man, if I could have thought like that at 20, I'm so impressed by you. Credit to some of my dad. He's half of the show. <laughs> well, homegirl, you are, I can't wait to know you in 20 years. So what I'll say is, I, I mean, the American dream I, I feel like what we looked at 10, 20 years ago was get all of this stuff, have the biggest house, keep up with the Joneses. Mm -hmm. And for me, and largely for many of the people that I am very close with, it's, it's more so the depth of experience, the depth of connection, the depth of everything versus the stuff. I mean, I, I, I joke all the time, like I, I drive a, you know, 100,000 mile pig cash pathfinder. Yeah. But I mean, the, the thing is like, it's not in the stuff, it's in the experience. Yeah. So you get more experience with more time and with more like dependability of your needs being met. Yeah. And those things for me are continuing to grow with my passive income and, and with, you know, making other people's lives better by having great communities for them to live in. So that's what it means to me. I love it. Okay. Follow up to that. What okay. are you now doing to take it to, to accomplish that goal? I'm continuing to do more real estate project. You know, this afternoon we're going to, you know, vet out, finally decide if we're going to offer on a 66 unit in Ohio that we like. We're building, you know, passive investor lists of folks that we want to work with. I work with a ton of doctors. My brother is an emergency room physician. We're getting him on board in wow. terms of investing. So we're working to bring this dream to help ourselves by helping other people realize their dreams and get their needs taken care of with passive income. So, Love and inspiring people along the way. I just, I mean, I feel like you're given two arms for a reason, right? One to pull yourself up and one to pull other people up and I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm doing both. I love that. I really do. So Mandy, thank you so much for coming on. How can our listeners get in touch with you if they really touch with you other than aspiring women? Yeah. Well, because I do a lot of stuff, <laughs> like my investing arm is good fortune capital the aspiring women achieving more is the women's inspiration accountability group i have mandymcallister.com which is kind of a hub for all of those things awesome. and easiest way to find me is there 
Okay, wonderful. We'll put that all in the description. And thank you so much again. I have loved getting to know you and I hope to continue to get to know you because I'm very excited to be joining this group and finally have some some women <laughs> around me. me that too, is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thank you, Abigail. Um, and I'm so glad that I get to have you as part of one of my one of my series guests. It's a real honor. Yay, it's an honor for me too. Thank you for the chance. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Next Level American Dream. If you would like to learn more about what we talked about today, want to contact the team directly, or are interested in passively investing and being a part of our deal room, head over to our website at www.thompsonmultifamilygroup.com. Before you go, please leave a review. Your comments help us create more episodes for you to enjoy.